Hello everyone and welcome to my Retro Media Room. Today we're taking a look at five PlayStation 3 games that are still stuck on the PlayStation 3. These have no remasters, re-releases, or anything. The only way you're natively going to play these is on your PlayStation 3. Real quick, I want to plug my cousin's brand new video over in his channel, Jade Martinez. Welcome to El Ultimo Diablo Arc Survival Ascended Fan Showcase. My brother from another mother, Fat Man Dragon, built a town from the ground up. It's a Western style town. It's goofy, hilarious, and a good time. My cousin's very good at editing, so it's very entertaining. He's also got other content on his channel that's entertaining, so go check that out. Link is in the description. And please don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out if you appreciate this sort of content. So we're going to take a look at some gameplay and unboxing and have a good time. So let's get started. And the first game on our list is Resistance Fall of Man, developed by Insomniac Games and released by Sony. Resistance Fall of Man is actually a launch title on the PlayStation 3. It was the first game that I ever got for it, even though I was a year late to the PlayStation 3 when I originally got it. I had heard so many good things about this game. It was a really impactful launch title that I went ahead and just got this as my first game because I always wanted to play it, kind of like Halo on the original Xbox. The Resistance series is actually really incredible. It's really sad and maddening, really, that they haven't re-released or remastered or anything with this franchise because it's really incredible. So I wanted to start with the first one here because while all of them are great and 2 and 3 get even better than this, I figured it's fair enough to start the original. This is actually one of the few games that was showcased at the E3 2005 PlayStation 3 gameplay reveal where they used actual gameplay, not pre-rendered cinematics, to showcase the game. We'll get into that again with some of the upcoming games on this list. This is a World War II inspired science fiction shooter that's basically a reimagined history where we go to war with this entity called the Chimera that basically infects all throughout the world, mutating people into these monsters. And I say World War II because you can tell by the weaponry and the imagery and the parts of Europe that you start fighting in. It is very much World War II-esque, which is actually pretty cool here. So the tone feels very much like that, except you're fighting these big hulking monsters. Graphics here are excellent, especially for a launch title. This was one of the earliest titles to showcase the power of the PlayStation 3. Yes, the PlayStation 3 had its shortcomings. It was hard to develop for. Third-party titles tend to struggle on it. That had an easier time on the Xbox 360. A lot of that to do with the fact that the Xbox 360 was Windows-based, so it was easier to develop on and port to. But man, these PlayStation 3 exclusives, which we'll see down the list here, are some incredible games for that generation. Since Insomnia Games had developed Ratchet & Clank before this, you can really see the DNA of Ratchet & Clank's weapons in the creative weapons in this game. Every weapon has a secondary fire, which I, of course, love, and they're very creative, just like the weapons throughout the Ratchet & Clank series. From a weapon that's able to tag your enemy and you shoot around corners and automatically goes to them, just like in the fifth element, or be able to put up a shield in front of you mid-air that's one-sided so you shoot through it and yet it blocks their shots, or just the old-school ARs and shotguns. The weapons here feel fantastic. The gunplay is a lot of fun. The story is very cool. This was easily one of the best shooters on the PlayStation 3, and it's one of my favorite franchises from Sony. This was a true first-person shooter showcase for Sony back in the day, and this is easily one of their best legacy franchises. So if you want a fast-paced, hard-hitting, atmospheric, graphically impressive first-person shooting, you really can't go wrong with the Resistance Fall of Man. I've always loved this game. I want to beat it again, and I really want to beat 2 and 3. That'll definitely be a future video if you all want to see more PlayStation 3 stuff that this video does well. I want to take a look at those because I love those games very much. And notice the box out here. This was the launch style uh, PlayStation 3 era of boxes. So just you know, noting that. So yeah, Resistance Fall of Man, absolutely a PlayStation 3 classic. And if you haven't played it, you need to check it out. Next, we have the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection. And within it, we're taking a look at Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, developed and released by Konami. With the recent release of Metal Gear Solid Collection Volume 1, which features Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3, pretty safe to assume that if they release a volume 2 that it's going to feature Metal Gear Solid 4, which makes sense because it doesn't really need a remake the likes of Metal Gear Solid 3. It just needs a mere re-release with better resolution and frame rate and it'll look phenomenal on current consoles. Because this game is an absolute technical marvel, one of the best looking PlayStation 3 games ever released and one of the most impressive games from that entire generation. As per usual for a Metal Gear Solid game, the primary mechanic here is going to be stealth. Now, there's quite a bit of combat as well, but stealth would be the main one. You have quite a bit of tools at your disposal, from your eyepiece that gives you intel and night vision, your camouflage suit, when you lean up against walls or lay on the floor, your suit transforms into those textures, tranquilizer guns, silence weapons, taking down enemies with your stun knife, you name it, there's tools at your disposal to get past the situations in a stealthy manner. 
Now, for me, I always have to completely readjust my brain to the way Kojima games play, especially Metal Gear Solid, because it's just different than everything else. Once you do, it's fine, but it takes some adjusting. Now, when you do get to combat, it's very good. Now, don't expect Gears of War or Uncharted levels of pick up and play, but once you adjust to it, it's quite good. Hyper detailed weapons to choose from that you're able to customize through the black market, through the start menu. The amount of weapons here dwarf the previous entries. Now, I did run into a couple of gripes about the game, mainly the fact that sometimes getting from point A to point B is unclear and annoying to where you could be running in circles in one part of the area, alerting enemies and getting away from them and hiding and dealing with them, whereas all you had to do is go around one corner into a room and initiates a cutscene and gets you out of the area. And it doesn't matter if the enemies are alerted or not. So there's a few times where I was like, man, I made that way harder myself than I needed to if I would have just known to go in this one room or through this one door. So that happened a few times, and that's a little clunky. That's not the best. But as you play and as it goes, it does get better. Yes, you have great combat, genre-defining stealth, incredible technical showcase. All those things aside, the story, world-building, character development, dialogue, everything about this is absolutely epic. It is pure Kojima, including some of his humor. There's nothing else like Kojima's games, and there's nothing else like Metal Gear Solid. And this Legacy Collection is actually really cool to have, although this variant is hard to find. uh, There's a standard variant that's easier to find, so I recommend getting a hold of that because you got Metal Gear Solid on the Nintendo through Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation, and then you got Metal Gear 2, 3, and 4, of course, and then you got Peace Walker and some other goodies. So this really was the, when this first came out, this was the absolute complete package when it first came out, and now we have these volumes coming out of modern hardware, so that's ever-evolving. So you got this outer slipcase... And then you got an art book here, which is really cool. So I'm very glad I got a hold of this when it first came out because it right at really not long after it came out, this became hard to get, uh, this variant. So yeah, all this really awesome artwork, a history of the game. And then you got the actual standard case here. So the standard version is pretty much just this, which is uh, two discs. Uh, the first disc has all that content on it. And then, of course, the second disc, or actually this is disc one. This has Guns of the Patriots on it. So Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, highly recommended if you have a PlayStation 3. I would say it's a must-own title if you have a PlayStation 3, you should definitely check it out. Here we have this Killzone trilogy set, and we're going to take a look at Killzone 1 and 2. So to start, we're going to look at Killzone, developed by Guerrilla Games, released by Sony, and this PlayStation 3 port was developed by Supermassive Games. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, but that's a PlayStation 2 game. It is. But it's a PlayStation 3 port of a PlayStation 2 game. And I wanted to go ahead and talk about it because I've always loved the first Killzone. It's my favorite of the series. And it's unfortunate that they've never remastered or re-released it beyond the PlayStation 3. And it really deserves to be. So Killzone is a futuristic sci-fi shooter set in the year 2357. Where you play as members of the ISA, who is the military armed wing of the United Colonial Nations on the planet Vecta, which is like Earth. Fighting against the invasion of the Hellgas from the planet Helgan. The game opens up with one of my favorite intros ever on the PlayStation 2. It really does set the tone for the world, and it's really awesome. It looks like a movie. Thankfully, there's not much compression going on here, so it looks fantastic. So Hellgas were banished to Helgan. Many of them died, but the ones that did survive became pale, hairless, superior strength and stamina, and they have to use air tanks to breathe. So they're trying to invade Vecta to take it back. You play as Templar, Ruger, Rico, and Hakka. The beginning segments of the game you play as Templar, who's your run-of-the-mill, jack-of-all-trades soldier, with your ISA-issued AR with his underbarrel grenade launcher, which showcases the secondary fire modes in the game, which most of the weapons have, which I've always loved. So there's a lot of variety with all the different guns, and it's kind of fun to figure out what guns secondary fire do what. They're highly detailed, really impressive for the PlayStation 2, with awesome reloading animations. Eventually, you're able to then select Ruger, who's the primary stealth character of the group, She comes equipped with a knife, which does really cool kill animations that all you have to do is walk in front or behind enemies and press X and it automatically initiates the kill animation. Very fun. And she's also issued what is arguably the best gun of the game, a fully automatic silenced SMG with fully automatic and semi-automatic fire modes. The semi-automatic fire mode, while it is quite a slow rate of fire, can potentially do one-shot headshot kills. In addition to all that, she has thermal goggles that she's able to see in the dark. So Ruger is very fun and a very cool character, brings a lot to the table. Then you have Rico of the group, who has his attached LMG, a la Aliens, with an underbarrel rocket launcher. He's the spray and pray, run and gun of the group, a lot of fun. You're able to mow down groups of enemies. He's kind of the Raphael of the group, he's got the most attitude. Then you have Hakka, who's half Hellgast, half human. 
who's been working undercover as an intelligence officer, so he's able to bypass Hellgast's security measures. And he's the most proficient with Hellgast weapons, which are also very good weapons. So throughout the course of the game, you're able to select all four characters, and each character you play open up different paths, different options, different experiences. And with all of them, you're able to carry up to three weapons, so you can mix and match how you like, depending on the strength of the character. So really, you want to play this game up to four different times to get all the different experiences of the game from the different characters. It's really in-depth in that way. There's a lot of substance to this. The interactions between the characters and the cutscenes, while the cutscenes are heavily compressed, so they don't look that great, to be honest, that's unfortunate, but the dialogue and character interactions and world building is actually very good. The atmosphere, the level design, the gunfights, the story. I've always really loved Killzone. This is my favorite first-person shooter from the PlayStation 2, and this is the most premium way to play it on the PlayStation 3. I highly recommend you check it out. Killzone 1 is a classic. Then we have Killzone 2. I'm going to be honest here, I have some pretty heavy criticisms of this game, as well as some praises. Don't get me wrong, I like the game a lot, but I'm going to talk about my criticisms. To start, you can only have two weapons versus three from the previous game, your pistol and a rifle. That's it. To my knowledge, I wasn't able to pick up any more weapons other than just having two at a time. Whereas in the first game, you can pick up any three that you like, which I thought was a little bit more fun. Additionally, there's no secondary fire whatsoever in the game. That is absolutely disappointing. The secondary fire throughout most of the weapons of the first game was a lot more fun, and that really took away some of the depth of the combat here. And lastly, and what affects the game the most, is the fact that you only have one character you're able to play throughout the whole campaign. He's kind of a nobody Chad that I don't really care about compared to the characters from the first game. He has no special abilities to him. You just simply pick up a gun, shoot. It's pretty basic. The character interactions between the four from the previous game and becoming attached to those characters and understanding them, all of that is gone. A lot of the substance from the first game is lacking in Killzone 2, and that's always been disappointing. And an additional gripe is that if you don't have a six-axis capable controller, let's say you have a third-party controller with no six-axis, once you get to certain segments with mechanics where you have to use the six-axis to, say, turn a wheel and tilt, you can't progress in the game. So I had to go and dig out one of my DualShock 3s in order to progress in the game, and that's annoying because I use third-party controllers half the time. Now, I'm going to put aside the gripes, and here's what I do like about the game. The game is phenomenally beautiful. It's one of the best-looking games of that entire generation, Epic set pieces, awesome gunplay, really cool combat scenarios, super cinematic. It is an absolute visual spectacle showcase for the PlayStation 3. And like I said, one of the most beautiful that whole generation. And it really does have solid gunplay. The guns look and animate fantastic. It is super epic and cinematic all throughout. Very cool, very fun. I do like this game a lot. But compared to the first game as a kill zone, it just lacks a lot of substance that the first one had. Even though obviously it outdoes it in the visuals and polish department, it's just not as good of a game as the first one in my opinion. But I still recommend it though, because it is an absolute showcase for the PlayStation 3. So earlier I mentioned that 05 E3, where they did that PlayStation reveal showcase, including Resistance Fall of Man, where they showed an early build of the game using actual gameplay. In the case of Killzone 2, which was the highest profile of the bunch, they did not do that. They used a pre-rendered sequence to represent the game, and people were not having it. Even though there was some debate amongst the community, most intelligent people were able to tell, this is pre-rendered, this is not gameplay, and we're going to call you out. So eventually, even though it felt like pulling teeth at the time, Gorilla ended up apologizing for misrepresenting the game using pre-rendered sequences, and this was one of the early high-profile cases that led to there being more transparency in the industry when showing video game trailers. Because frankly, people were just sick of seeing games revealed that end up looking nothing like the final product. Now, to be fair, the final product ended up looking pretty close to what that pre-rendered sequence did. But it was not possible for it to absolutely look like that, if not better. So it was wrong what they did. So with the Killzone trilogy set here, you have the first disc, which has Killzone 1 and 2 on it. And then the third disc has Killzone 3. That's going to be a future video. I really like Killzone 3. I think it was an improvement over 2 uh, in every regard. So uh, it was more of a return to form, in my opinion, after 2 was kind of disappointing compared to 1. Uh, Killzone 1 and 2, this trilogy set, buying the first one digitally, anything you can do to get a hold of them, I highly recommend it for your PlayStation 3. And finally, we have MotorStorm, developed by Evolution Studios and released by Sony. Yet again, we have a PlayStation 3 launch title, and also again, we have another victim of that E305 showcase, where they showed pre-rendered imagery instead of gameplay. 
Obviously, it's not able to look as insane as that pre-rendered sequence did, but it does look quite phenomenal. Highly detailed environments, crazy physics, motion blur, you name it, this game is lush in detail and animation. Absolutely a showcase for the PlayStation 3, and especially for a launch title. What sets this apart from your typical racer is the chaos and the fury of the race. And it's not easy. I hadn't played this in a long time, so I was struggling to place to qualify in the race. But once I forced myself to become familiar with the track and master it, and I got that first place, it was very satisfying, and it showed me that this is not your typical racer. So you really do want to figure out the course. Whether it be you're using a motorcycle and flying high off ramps, or a truck and going down below in the mud, there's all sorts of different terrains and paths. There's a high amount of satisfaction compared to other racers when you really do place first, because it took a lot of effort to do it. What I also love about this game is how unpredictable the physics are the way you wreck, the way you get turned over, the way vehicles crash into each other. The crashes are this side of burnout. It's absolutely insane and not your standard racing fare with how chaotic it gets. So that level of unpredictability, while can be frustrating at times, overall is very fun and cool. So if you want an unconventional racer with a lot of visual flair and chaos, you cannot go wrong with MotorStorm. Eventually, I'm going to get to the sequels and that could be in a future video because these games are really cool. Even if you're not super into racing games, this kind of sets itself apart. So I really enjoyed picking up MotorStorm and playing it. Like I said, I hadn't played it in a long time, so there was a little bit of a learning curve. But once I got into it, I was having a lot of fun and really admiring the visual flair and the physics and everything. This game is wild and unpredictable. So that was five PlayStation 3 games that are stuck on the PlayStation 3 that really deserve to have some sort of re-releases in the future. Hopefully we'll see some of those. So if you like this sort of content, please subscribe. Please hit the like button and comment on the video and tell me what you think. You have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all later.